Well, before I start this video, I think it's time for a little disclaimer. Putting a homemade wood stove in a trailer is a bad idea. And if you don't have the right materials, training, and common sense, you may die. And going out in the middle of the winter with a small camper without the right skills and equipment is also a really bad idea, and you could die. And one more word of warning. Never follow my cooking recipes. You won't die, but your stomach will never forgive you. Well, if there's still anybody watching after all that, I hope you enjoy this video. To me, the greatest challenge of winter camping is not the camp, it's just getting there in one piece. And once you arrive, other challenges are inevitable. Well, down in there is where I want to go, but the snow plows kind of made a bank. Shoveling time. I think I can manage that. My first duty once unhitched is to open the camper to the daylight and take all necessary items out of storage. Another area of storage is this tube at the back of the camper. Comes in really handy. I think it used to be for the, uh, the sewage hose, but now My solar panel poles. My antenna pole, but I don't think I'm going to use it this time. And my stovepipe. With sunlight so fleeting in winter, setting up the solar panel to capture energy is the next priority. As for storage in the caddy, last time I used it, it was for the diesel heater. But this time, it's a little different. I've got this, which I'll talk about later. But here's my new storage. which now holds all the stuff for the wood stove or pellet stove if you like. The solar panel got a little grimy on the way in, so it's time for a little target practice. Snowballs are the winter version of handy wipes. Oh, this is so good. It's been a polar vortex hell for like three weeks and it's almost above freezing right now. I've got a feeling in the next couple of days it's actually going to go above freezing. The first time in February. Uh, I, yeah, I, I mean I could be I could be working on the stove but what's the rush? I don't need it right now. The sun's shining. There's not much wind, a little bit of a wind, but 
I just want to warm up in the chill, you know what I mean? In my last video I did some preliminary tests on a wood stove, but I didn't show where I stored it. It's here under the front seat beside the battery. As for the window insert, it just sits on the top of my rear storage area. Well, the sun's almost down and it is getting cold again. You can probably see my breath, so the temperature's dropped at least five degrees and it's gonna be a lot colder tonight. Now, I've got the outside flue here, the elbow, and by the way, this is just an, a galvanized elbow. Because it's on the outside, I didn't have to spend the extra money on a steel one. Uh, there's no health issue. And uh, a few people have actually commented, why haven't I braced this, you know, so it doesn't like flop down like that in the wind? Well, I did use two pipe clamps, one here and one on the inside. So it's reasonably secure and it's actually quite light. Uh, I don't think it's going to flop over, uh, but if you prove me wrong, then yes, I will probably put some bailing wire on this and just strap it to the support of the awning. But right now, seems to be okay. So I guess we'll find out. I think it's about minus six right now, which is about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got the stove all set up. Um, same system as before. I haven't really changed anything. Nothing much different this time, except you can see I've got my water jug here. I'm gonna keep it right by the stove. I've got my sleeping bag here, my pillows. The only thing I changed was for the cushions. I've got a bungee cord and, of course, a pool noodle. And I've just got a little D-ring hanger in the corner and I already had one over there. And all that does is it prevents the cushions from sliding into the wood stove. That's it. As for pellets, I have added a few, but what I started off with, this is like a gallon jug of water, the, the jug container. I filled it up with pellet, pellets and I've only used that much. It's only to about there. I don't do it full until I've actually got the fire start started properly and then I put more in. Apparently some missed the fact that the hopper has a cap on top. It's only open to add pellets and then closed up again. Anyway, I think it's time to crank her. Now there is smoke there, but I think most of it is actually steam. Right at the initial startup, the flue really gets smoky, but this is only temporary. It's heating up well now. A lot different from the last time. Oh, there goes the fan. So, yeah, it's definitely heating up. It took 50 minutes to go from 0 Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 15 Celsius or around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. As for smoke, once the initial burn was over, all you could see were clear ripples of heat exiting the stack. Well, I've had to do a little regulating. The stove got way too hot, even though it's quite cold outside. Yeah, close to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the trailer. Like if I do a reading in this area, and this is the hottest area, right now, 82 degrees. So yeah, I had to cool it down quite a bit. So uh, yeah, I turned down the damper and uh, reduced the uh, air coming in. And that's helped considerably. But there's some people that wanted some numbers. Now that it's at a comfortable level, um, what are the temperatures? So, 
on top of the stove right now is 553 Fahrenheit. Now, stovepipe. A lot of people want to know how hot does the stovepipe get? Well, just as it's exiting, 300 degrees. At the top, the top is 200 degrees. I would have actually thought it was hotter at the curve. Let me just try that again. It's 200 degrees at the curve. Now, where it meets the wall, and I just want to touch it. The wall, this part here is actually cold. The metal part below, it's just barely, I can just barely feel a little bit of warmth. Um, yeah, at the top, it's not getting hot. Is the wall hot? Well, you know, somebody wanted to know how much the reflector does. So let's work with the reflector next. And the reflector directly behind the stove, and this might not be accurate, 223.7 degrees. How much does it actually deflect? Let's go to the wall behind there. The wall is 84.6. So yes, that old camper stove does deflect and and hold back some of the heat because and when I touch this it is it is pretty warm uh, but the wall it's not so yes this does deflect the heat and it's certainly hot right here I'm hoping and, and you can see the the flame is just I'm letting it just go down a little bit more and the fan is regulating that quite well it's uh, it's distributing it a little bit better. So I think in a few minutes, hopefully it'll re re regulate itself. I don't want the flame to go out. I better watch that. But uh, uh, yeah, it's working properly. However, I do want it to cool down a little bit just so I'm a little bit more comfortable. Chow time. And on tonight's menu was fried zucchini and fried rice and a uh, Asian mushroom sauce. Now I typically have a side of protein as well. However, I somehow forgot to bring my veggie dogs or my veggie sausages. So what I'm going to do is to balance it out. I did bring some noble jerky, vegetarian jerky, hickory flavor. So there's my protein. I've had worse. Time for a little cool down. I don't want it too hot at night. It's almost time to go to bed. And a few people were wondering where on earth am I going to sleep? Because this is my bed and a good portion of it has been taken up with the stove. And no, I'm not going to sleep with my feet on the stove. Don't believe somebody actually commented that, but in any case, I do have it figured out. So let me show you. Here's my sleeping bag. And by the way, some people were thinking, well, that front area could also be a bed, and it can. However, I got all my camera stuff over there, so yeah, this is my bed. Let me show you how it works. Now you might remember me bringing this in from the tongue of the trailer. But here's what it is. Cute little table. And pull the straps. You get a nice flat table, which just happens to be almost identical to the height of uh, the base here. So all I have to do is take one of the cushions from the corner, and 
put it right there or I guess I can put it like that but um, don't want to do that what I'm doing is I'm sacrificing this area I don't need to get in here tonight but I still have access to this cupboard and the refrigerator so all I need is my sleeping bag which I've got strapped up here there it is unzip that pillows in the corner lots of room and I don't have to put my feet on the stove this is kind of nice well it's morning a quarter to eight and it's still going strong Window's a little frosty, but this one's clear. This one's not too bad. But I think it's right at the end of its pellets. Probably just go for a few more minutes and uh, that'll be it for the morning. Banana pancakes from the propane stove. Although I did put the kettle on on the pellet stove, see if there's enough remaining just to heat up a coffee. Well, the flame just went out. It's 8.20, so the stove has been going for f oh, about 15 hours. Um, I did use, actually, probably the equivalent of two of these. I did one and that lasted me till I think about 1130 so it was about seven hours of heat from one of these and then I topped it up again I might not have got a full one I'll have to I'll have to measure it and see exactly what I use but two you'd be really comfortable with but if you only need it for eight hours you could probably extend it with just one of those now did it get hot enough for my coffee. And it did. Ooh, it's really hot. And I've got an instant coffee warmer here if I want to sip it slowly. Not done my pancakes yet. There was a little bit of snow last night. It's on the chair. But the nice thing is, it's snow, it's not rain. Off it comes. A little bit of a wind. It didn't move the, uh, the flue though. It didn't tilt over, even though there's a bit of a wind. As for creosote dripping down the smokestack, it merely drained out the elbow and didn't go into the camper. Sunny day, no sitting around. I'm gonna enjoy it. I only had one chore to clean the snow off the solar panel. Good thing I brought an extendable broom just for the occasion.
Well, it's time for a cold and probably windy little walk. Ah, oh, darn that wind. I really wanted to just sit out here and get some vitamin D, but all I get is vitamin C as in chill. It's cold, a little bit of sun, whoa. <laughs> That's the problem with uh, winter time in sunlight, especially when the sun's that way, it reflects right off the snow and that's how you get snow blindness. Yeah, the shades are on, uh, and I'm all bundled up. I don't think there's anything that's going to get vitamin D, my forehead, I guess. But that's better than nothing. I really haven't done a lot of camping lately, as you can tell, especially when it's like this. Like, I'm not doing this as some sort of endurance test. I go out into the wilderness all year round because I enjoy it, but if it's too extreme, like 40 below, uh-uh, not going to do it. Sub-zero for s several weeks. Now I've got a windstorm, so i got to take whatever I can get, but if there's a few gaps in my videos, that's why. At dusk, I brought my solar panel flat with the roof. No sense keeping it up on a windy night. Getting the stove to the right heat and getting the flame right is more an art than a science and it's not as easy as it looks. Um, you take your, your eye off it for a couple of minutes and it could be out or it could be too hot. Well as much as I tried to not make it get too hot, it got too hot anyway. I opened the window, I opened the door, 
and it's just starting to cool down again. But that brings me to an incredibly important point, and that is ventilation. The stove, the way I've got this, is a closed loop. Air is coming in, hot air is going out, and inside the camper it's just getting hotter and hotter. The air inside has to circulate as well. In order to accomplish this, I need vents. The cold air comes from the lower vent, and the warm air escapes from either a side window or the roof vent. Now, in a perfect world, this works reasonably good. However, if there is even a hint of wind outside, that can make huge problems. Because if the wind blows in the wrong direction and goes down the stovepipe, all hell breaks loose inside the camper. So, what I'm saying is, it is a challenge to put a wood stove in a camper. Please do your research and experiment outside first before you even think of putting something in your camper and putting your life in danger. And just like SCTV, I'm going to do a really, really scary story for you, but in real life, because the winds have got a lot stronger and they're coming from the front of the camper. What happens if I open up my vent during the windstorm? Let me show you. Now in order to make this evil experiment work, I had to first close the other two vents, the one on the window and the one by the floor. Then open the roof vent with the cover facing into the wind. Now of course the winds have died down, but I think I've set this up properly. There we go. See what's going on? That is because the wind coming in at that direction has turned my trailer into a vacuum. And so all the smoke is now coming in and this fire alarm is going to go off really quick. So I got to stop this right now. As I see it, the hot air rising and the wind deflecting off the vent cover made a negative pressure around the stove, causing the outside air from the flue and the inlet to try to fill the void. The path of least resistance was the hopper. Okay. So my point being, it might seem like a friendly fire, but in an instant, it can fill up with smoke. So please be careful and don't do anything stupid like I just did. It seems my closed loop is not as sealed as it needs to be. I expect a redesign as Dennis Hopper is now Dennis the Menace. And by the way, I do have a carbon monoxide detector. Well, it's 20 after 7. Sun's just coming up. And the stove's still going. I filled it up about 2.30 in the morning last time. And uh, however, at 2.30, the flame actually went out and it got cold. I don't know why it went out, but it went out. That's all that counts. And uh, yeah, I had to stoke the coals to get it going again. Usually it's the first hour you got to try to regulate it and it can be a bit of a challenge but once it gets going to the right intensity it usually stays there and uh, yeah that's good. Hopefully I've got enough for boiling water. I can have some oatmeal and coffee and then I got to pack up. Well, almost off. I survived the stove, I survived winter, and I survived my own cooking. But looking back in the stove and the heating experiments so far, what would I recommend? It's gonna be something different for everybody. 
Certainly, an onboard propane furnace is the most reliable. Diesel, to me it was the most annoying. And uh, a wood stove, it's certainly the most soothing, but it's also the most dangerous. So, you know, I just put out a few choices, but you have to make your own decision. Yeah, uh, but there is a fourth, which eliminates all those issues. Let's just go somewhere warm when you want to camp. Why didn't I think of that? Hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my others as well. If you're curious, it's British baked beans, hash browns, and shallots with a little Ms. Dash. Or is it Miss Dash? I don't know. <laughs>